Serbia and Kosovo were caught up in yet another dispute, but this time over road access. Serbia's troops are currently on high alert near the Kosovo border, and video clips circulating online suggest Belgrade is sending tanks to the breakaway territory. Now, this comes after Kosovo ordered Serbian drivers entering the region to obtain new license plates issued by Kosovo. A two vehicle registration officers have been attacked as a result near the border. The Serbian president says the dispute's been building up for a while, but foreign powers have turned a blind eye. The complete occupation of northern Kosovo and Metohija with armored vehicles by Pristina has been going on for the past seven days. And everyone in the international community stays thunderously silent. Individuals and groups whose activities endanger the rule of law and public order are attacking our state and disturbing the peace. They are clearly encouraged and supported by Serbia. Serbia is using the citizens of Kosovo to provoke a serious international conflict. Serbia does not recognize its former province of Kosovo as a separate nation, and thus it considers their mutual borders only a temporary boundary. Now, Kosovo unilaterally declared its independence from Serbia back in 2008, almost a decade after a war between two sides and a NATO intervention. Roughly half of UN members, however, have never actually recognized Kosovo as independent. Meantime, the EU has called on both sides to settle down. Kosovo and Serbia must find solutions to defuse the situation and agree on the way forward. The EU will actively support these efforts. Both Kosovo and Serbian leaders are fully responsible for any risks to the safety and well-being of local communities. We asked our guests what's driving the Balkan standoff. They think tacit support from the West is encouraging Kosovo to engage in confrontation with Serbia. The European Union, Western politicians calling on both sides to de-escalate when it's, as we said, only one side causing the controversy. And I actually had a chance to interview one of the officials of Albin Kurdi's party, Albin Kurdi being the so-called prime minister of the so-called Republic of Kosovo, who admitted, Isar Yemeri is his name, who admitted that Kosovo is essentially a colony of the West. And uh, this basically means that nothing that Kosovo does is done without approval of the United States. So it's basically an issue where Kosovo does whatever it wants uh, with the blessing of the United States. And then the West says, you know, you two, Pristina and Belgrade need to figure out a solution of how to get out of this, out of a situation that is caused by Western interference. What we have here is um, a US uh, attempt to up, up the ante, as it were. I mean, what uh, seems to be happening is that things are too quiet for Washington's taste, and they're encouraging the uh, Albanian uh, leadership to up the temperature so that the West can then pressure Serbia to lower the temperature, as always happens. This is one side, the Albanian leadership, advised by Washington, behaving unilaterally, creating a crisis. So any concessions uh, should be by them, which should basically mean de-escalation of their tendency to escalate. In the wider picture, we have, um, as I say, uh, Washington advising the Albanians. We have uh, President Vucic taking perhaps too much advice from Tony Blair. So you really have Western participants on both sides. In a way, we, are, we have here just a kind of another geopolitical situation by proxy with the Albanians using, uh, performing their usual quizzling role uh, of appeasing the uh, empire that seems to be around at the time.